Well, everything old is new again, including a style of dining that gained popularity during the Great Depression called Automats. It's a type of food vending machine that allows diners to pay for their meals and then receive them from a cubby-like compartment. The last one in New York City closed in the 1990s, though, but now restaurant tours are bringing them back. So for more on this, we are joined by Stratus Morfogan. He is the creator of the Brooklyn Dumpling Shop, which is an automat chain based in New York. So you got me going right down the rabbit hole right with this because people know I live in Philadelphia. So as soon as I start to read about it, yeah. the first one was in Philadelphia, took off, and mm -hmm. then immediately they opened it, very quickly they opened another restaurant in New York. And yeah. it's, it's been great. Yeah. So talk to me about what the original Automat was yeah. and how, it's, why it's coming it, it, back. It's funny, we're flipping that. So the original one for me is New York, and we're actually, <laughs> we have three in construction in Philadelphia right now. Oh, get out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so great. the graffiti we're putting on the wall, we're doing like a, a homage to the Horn and Harder. Right. Because the Horn and Harder to me was the Model T. I got introduced to it when I was 10 years old and it never left my mind be growing up in a third generation of restaurants. Um, but when I, when I got turned on to the Automat, and then I, I realized, you know, um, in the 70s and 80s, it started falling apart. I didn't see them anymore. Yeah. And what happened with the Automat, to put it shortly, is that technology failed the Automat in the 70s. The rise of fast food was coming at us, and there were no dollar bill receivers. There were no credit card processors. Mm -hmm. So people felt, the consumer fell out of favor with the Automat. So the, the point is, technology killed the automat in the 70s. Yeah. And the last one, like you said, was 1991. Yeah. Um, More novelty than you Yeah, know. it was a novel thing yeah. because they went from, I think, 100 locations down to like 17 by 1980s. Right. So the, the original, the old style, you go in with your coins. Yeah. And the, the secretaries who had never been sort of working in the city before, they were there, <laughs> yeah. and the businessmen. And you had this, you, you threw your coins in and you got whatever was in yeah. the cubby hole. Um, and it offered you a quick... Fresh meal. Yeah. You didn't have to tip anyone, mm -hmm. which would be a little bit different than a sit-down restaurant. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. What, what's the new version of this? So, you know, what we did at first, it started at Brooklyn Chop House. We created this new variation of dumpling. We created a sandwich dumpling. We do everything from peanut butter and jelly, bacon, cheeseburger. Everything that was once a sandwich is a dumpling. So it's important <laughs> that the fare is there because the, the automat can be a novel approach. If your food is not great, it, you know, people will come experience it once, pull out their phone. Yeah. So what we did with Brooklyn Dumpling Shop was is that I wanted to create a, a, a restaurant concept that speaks to the phone. Mm -hmm. So we created the smartphone automat, smartphone controlled automat. And, you know, when I see my kids 15 and 16, they barely want to speak to me. <laughs> they text me more than they actually speak <laughs> right, to me right. sometimes. I said, you know, this is where it's going is that we need to basically, you know, when people go to a restaurant, like I just heard like the McDonald's and the Starbucks of the world, we have the latest in self-ordering kiosks. And these self-ordering kiosks are the latest thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell them, and I've done it a couple of times in a conference, and I don't mean to be mean by it, but I said the self-ordering kiosk is this generation's fax machine. <laughs> it's already outdated. <laughs> right. This is the cash register. Right. So and, and how does you, yours work? controlled by a smartphone. Mm -hmm. We do have the kiosks there because the kiosks have to speak to the 35 and over crowd. That walk in and be like, you know, wow, you know, how do I do this? And we have a greeter in the front, and the greeter well, actually. What is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the greeter actually, with our automat, people say, oh, it's lack of uh, personalization. Actually, we do more customer service because we have a greeter in the front. Hey, first time here, let me show you how it works. Mm -hmm. And yes, they bring these guests, which especially over the 35 age group, they'll bring them to the kiosk and show them how the kiosk works. But when you get the 15 to 30 year olds, they've already placed their order online. Mm -hmm. They've picked a time, they've paid for the order. It says three o'clock. They walk in at 2.55 and they're like this to the oh. greeter. They got it, they understand it. And We're they just go to the cubby hole and get and their They meal. get a QR code, they scan their phone. And they take their food and go. So who is coming? Uh, who are you seeing come more? Is it the people looking for nostalgic finds or is it someone who is young going, OK, I'm going to try something totally unheard of? So the whole creation and concept of, of Brooklyn Dumpling Shop is to respect the consumer's time. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And, you know, it's like we don't need toll booths on the highways. We don't need umpires behind home plate in baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, these are like obstructions <laughs> to getting to the, to, the, to the finish line. And I think that's what a cashier is. We've only, what we've done is we've just moved the transactional experience to the guest experience. We don't need to assist people on placing the order, but when they're at the shop, we'll tell them what to have, how to do it, you know, how, how this system works. Once they get a taste of it, and I've heard this from senior citizens, they're like, wow, you have changed my way. I can't even look at a cashier the same way anymore when I walk into the traditional fast casual restaurants. Huh. 
And it's exciting because we're changing their buying habits. But the truth of what we did with Brooklyn Dumpling Shop is that we've respected the consumer's time. You want it at 3 o'clock? Well, we're going to have it ready for you at 3 o'clock in a heated locker. But everything is cooked to order. There so, is a kitchen behind the automat. That's what I was going to ask you about. What, like, what's happening behind? Is it like a duck? You know, the whole thing about a duck and the, under, when you look under the water, the yeah. ducks are like frantically moving, <laughs> well, but on the surface it looks so it, it's, perfect? It's pretty similar because yeah. what we do is some of our restaurants have open kitchens, but there's always a couple of people cooking mm -hmm. at all times. Everything is cooked to order. When people get to the Brooklyn Dumpling Shop, um, which we have all in the tri-state area, now we're in Dallas and Austin as well, um, mm -hmm. you can order online, say 3 o'clock, pick it up, but we're cooking it at 2.55 and we're getting it ready, and it's fresh and hot. Wow. But if you come to the store, it takes about six to eight minutes because it's being cooked to order. Okay. So why didn't you do Everyone loves dumplings. You didn't have to do something like this. You can just do a regular takeout mm -hmm. dumpling spot. Why this? Uh, economics. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually created this before the pandemic, so it's nothing like we said, oh, this is for the pandemic. No. Yeah. Um, what it is is that three employees can actually serve us up to 250 guests a day. Wow. The industry norm is about six, and that's why we've, we've sold over 200 franchises mm. um, from here to Vancouver, because it's an economic model that works sure. from the business standpoint, and it really works for the consumer, because the consumer really is in full control of the ordering. There's clearly an appetite for it, yeah, I know, had to say it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and no, like we always say, who doesn't like a Reuben dumpling or a pastrami <laughs> dumpling or a bacon yeah. cheeseburger? To me, it's like... The way a pig in a blanket was introduced to the hot dog in the 70s. Right. This is a pig in a blanket for sandwiches. Why are you trying to make us hungry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where's yeah. our dumplings? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Stratus, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks we really appreciate it.